Good morning, beautiful souls. Happy Tuesday morning. Um, so in this live, what I want to come and hang out with you guys this morning um, and talk about is kind of stemming off of what we talked about yesterday with the narcissism and how to handle it and respond and stay high, keep our vibration higher um, than we, not allowing people to bring us down. And that is the, that's the center of what this group is about. <laughs> that's why this group exists, is to help whoever needs a reminder that they're a badass and that people don't have the control to bring us down. Like it's taking back your power, right? From, from, um, toxic relationships and, and taking control of our mind and all of that. And so, and I can only share my experience, right? So after yesterday, I did that, that I did that live about narcissism, you know, the 11 hacks to dealing with a narcissist. Okay. Or whatever. I don't even like to label. I don't like to say it like that. And I'm only saying it that way because that's really how people talk about them, right? Is Oh, I'm dating a narcissist or my mom's a narcissist or my sister or whatever, right? We, we label people this way. And, um, and for myself, that's helped me, that's helped me stay away from that because honestly, like I don't like labels. That's what we're trying to figure out here is our identity, right? And like who we really are at soul level, what we're here to do, all this stuff. And so after I did that yesterday, I had this like spirit was like, you need to get back on there and tell, share with them the real way <laughs> to handle with difficult people in our life. Um, the way that I've done it, the way that, and not, and yes, I've, I've done all that stuff yesterday we talked about. Yes, that's, that's absolutely what everyone sh can help them stay high. And it's not about staying high vibe, okay? I don't like that. I don't even like to say high vibe. I d it's about, staying on your game. It's about keeping your shit under control. It's about responding with, um, mind, you know, mindful responding, being in, being present in your situations, responding in a way that's going to serve the highest good of yourself and everyone around you. You're a light worker. You're a healer. If you're in this space, you are somebody who can hold space, um, for other people and help them heal, even though you don't, might not know it yet. And so here's what I did. And I still do it. And I learned this from my coach. My first coach, Natalie Schlute, was uh, my first intuitive life coach. And this was before my dad died. When my dad died, I invested in her. Hi, Shelby. Um, and I actually invested. That's when I started. I realized that I don't want to go to therapy. I want a life coach <laughs> the next time. So that's what helped me. That's what got me into doing this is literally when my dad passed away, I saw a life coach instead of a therapist. And it just changed my world. And so now, so what Natalie taught me is what I'm going to teach. I'm going to share it with you guys as far as how to deal with difficult people, not so much narcissistic people, right? Or people with high narcissistic traits. It's just an everyday, just to help you guys stay in your power, right? That is the end game. We want to stay in our power. We want to not hand it out to everybody, right? And so uh, it won't get out of my head because yesterday... Those hacks absolutely work, but my goal in your life, in my life, <laughs> is to not be a, let's see, to shift the way we're thinking about things, right? To shift the way that we, because our thoughts are energy, right? And I'm an energy healer. That's what we do here. We heal with energy. And so what I've done in my relationship, my unhealthy relationship that is now, it's getting healthier, but it still has its moments. Like everything, nobody's perfect. No relationship is perfect. But here's what I do, okay? When it comes to David, when it comes to my mom, even though she's she's the loveliest, kindest lady in the world, but sometimes, but that still means she can be difficult, right? <laughs> difficult can be many, many different things. So here we go. First of all, 
when we start doing this spiritual, when we go down this spiritual path, this is really where I'm going to come from with this. When you are starting to step into who you are, you can start to get resistance from the people that have always been in your life because you're changing. And it's not so much you're, you're growing, you're evolving. And, and typically, people just do the same thing day in, day out. And then they have a midlife crisis or maybe something traumatic happens. And now they start questioning their beliefs. An awakening happens. And so when this happens, you can have the people around you that are resistant and like, oh, who is she? Oh, she's all spiritual now. Like, you know, you don't have the same beliefs as you did before. So this is going to kind of tie into that difficultness <laughs> of living a soul-led life um, when you have not been, maybe you weren't religious or spiritual before, but now you're really tapping into that part of you to learn more and you're getting some feed, you're getting like some weirdness going on with the people that you've known your whole life. Friends will start dropping off because you have different views. You have different ways of seeing things. And so number one, um, when dealing with difficult people like this and, and who want to talk about you, don't force your new beliefs on them. This is one thing. And this is with David. This is with whoever. Like like I said, it's going to be kind of a little, it's about two things, about staying on your game while you're healing in your spiritual path and then also with difficult people because it's really all in just one thing. But this is how you stay on top of your, your vibe. So don't force your new beliefs onto people. Like don't force your new beliefs on your husband if you are going on this spiritual or your best friend. Don't force them. Just allow them to be. Hold space for that too. Point out the good, not the bad, okay, in your husband or in your or whoever it is that's being difficult. Like point out the good. Like yesterday when I watched the video again, I was like, wow, I, um, I really, uh, this is like basically like I didn't really like the, the energy around it because that's not how I lived my, that's not how I live my life. I don't live in victim land. I just don't. <laughs> I don't. I do not. And it's almost like when I start to feel that way, which is what we're doing when we say, this person made me feel this, or, oh, my husband doesn't, I'm on my spiritual path, and my husband's not supporting me. I can't continue doing this. That is what I'm talking about, you guys. Like, that is what we need to stop if, if, it's, if that's happening. Um, and you need validation. If you need validation to start doing something new, which, yes, having some opinions about something is what we want, but it's about trusting ourselves and knowing what we need and knowing ourselves better than other people do. But when we, like, that's really what we're doing here is like taking back the power of we know what's best for us, okay? So don't force your new beliefs, point out the good and not the bad. So what are the good things that your husband's doing or your partner or whoever it was that's being difficult? What are the good things that they do in your life? Um, share what you're learning, okay? With, with David, I started to share oh, this is what I learned today with this energy thing. Or let me try this you know, NLP technique on you, even though he had no idea what I was talking about. But I shared what I was learning instead of it being this side thing where I didn't talk about it at all. I think you guys have heard me talk about that. When you start to meditate and you start to focus on you, we kind of create this little like secret box <laughs> and we don't want our kids to know or we don't want, especially when we start doing new things that's out of character of us, right? We want to keep that. Don't do that. Start sharing why you're doing this stuff, right? Um, and then another one, influence by leading by example. I've had a couple of you ask about how can we get our partners on board with the healing, right? With, or with the spirituality or how can we get them? And we can't get anyone to do anything. Newsflash. <laughs> we can't get anyone to be any different just because we want them to be. What we can do is we can lead by example, meaning... You meditate, right, once a day. Or maybe you're reading a book. Maybe you're going outside just to take, just to breathe. Maybe you're, you know, I don't know, whatever it is, you're leading by example. You're not doing things because somebody first says that it's okay to do it, or you're not meditating because it's gonna, you know, you're doing it for yourself, right? Or you should be. <laughs> should be. If you're not, then this is that's why you're here. I want you to be here. Um, this is exactly what this is for. Okay, the next one, mindful listening of their language. So listening to your partner, your husband, or your kid, or your sister, or your mom, or whoever it is that you're having difficulties with, listen to how they talk. Um, like, 
with David, I would listen because he's a man, right? So it's, he, he has a whole different outlook on things than I do, but I would listen. And I found, uh, like male influencers, spiritual male influencers, and just kind of sent him to his phone and was like, Hey, this was kind of what you were talking um, But anyway, listen to their language and then suggest ways that will resonate with them to maybe start doing some self-discovery or healing work, okay? But don't push what it is that you want on them. The next one, number six, embrace their differences. So instead of pointing out, I mean, you don't like when your flaws are pointed out, right? And that's usually what narcissistic people tend to do is they, they, um, they attack our weaknesses, right? And then they bring up things that we told them before and they throw them in our face. Okay. That is one thing. If you have anybody that throws stuff up in your face a lot, do that to where you're like, okay, yeah. And why am I supposed to be ashamed of that? Because you, like what we're ashamed of, it's because somebody made us, like somebody said something to us to make us feel like it was shame, right? Sarah, hi. Good. I'm so happy you're here. Um, because I know you'll be able to hear the, the volume on the next one or, you know, on the replay. <laughs> Let me know if you guys don't have the, the volume. Okay, next one. Let's get through this. So number seven, don't force anyone to adopt your beliefs. I already talked about that. Um, nine, no one can affect your energy unless you allow them. I'm going to say that again. No one can affect your energy unless you allow them. So if you are, if you've been in this group, you've seen my lives, you hear me talk about energy. I actually did a whole boot camp, energy boot camp on how to take care of your energy and you're still experiencing things. It's because you're probably not doing it every day. You're not shielding. You're not clearing. You're not doing all of that. You guys, there's a reason that I teach this. It's because it changed my life. By me learning how to manage my energy and take care of it. And it might sound woo woo or whatever too spiritual for some people right now. A hundred percent. It will change your fucking life. It did mine, especially when you're around difficult people to where you can control the energy that comes into your field. And the way that you do that is by setting a boundary and you in that intention, you command no one can come into my energy field unless I give them permission. And I will tell you also the number one thing that I did when I when I left David, what I had done four weeks up to that, I did cord cutting uh, meditations and energy healings four times a week. Okay. Like or three to four times a week. Um, I would do cord cutting and I cut off that cord. I would send him healing, loving light. I would heal myself and I would do that over and over and over because they're real. Energetic cords are real. Energetic entanglements are real. It isn't just make believe because we can't see it. So if you want to learn more about that, just put in the comments, I want to know more about the cords <laughs> or just put cords, okay? Because that is how like profound it is. So energy healing, energy work is going to change your life when you're with somebody like that, okay? Or anybody. It's going to change your life regardless. Also, no one can affect your manifestations unless you allow them. I'll say it again. No one can affect your manifestations unless you allow them. Well, how do you allow them? You allow them by allowing them to bring you down, allowing them by holding on to their words, by needing validation, by needing them to accept you for what you're doing. And that this goes back to when I started my VA business, a virtual assistant doing websites. My son and David talked shit to me for a long time. <laughs> they never, they thought I was the, they're like, that's so fucking stupid. And you're sitting on your ass. You're not, go get a job. You need to get a job. Like I heard it from both of them. And you know what I would do? And I didn't know why or how I did this. It was God. God was like, here, I'm going to help you with this. <laughs> Cause I had no idea how I did this. You guys, none. What I did was say, okay, thanks for your feedback and your input, but I got to go back to, I got to go build some websites. Like it did. I didn't, I didn't place emphasis on their opinions for one, because they didn't know what they're talking about. They had no idea what a virtual assistant was. They were only, they, it was just their opinion. They had no educated opinion of what it, what was good for me or not. They just didn't, I wasn't doing the normal thing. So they were trying to get me to not do that. And I was like, uh, uh, so that's another thing. Don't seek validation. Like you don't need anyone's permission to do anything. Okay. None. And so that starts today. No permission. You will just respect their opinion. That's it. Okay. The next thing, accept that they have their own beliefs. Accept them where they're at. The difficult person. 
or whoever, accept where they're at. They're not where you are. They're, they didn't start a spiritual journey or a journey to discovering who they are. They didn't, they didn't do that. That was us, right? That was me. I'm the one that started. I had an awakening. He didn't. My son didn't. My daughter didn't. My mom didn't. <laughs> my sister, my sister is pretty close though with me now. Like we're, we're, we're like leveling out to where we're in the same place, but not everyone's in the same place as you. Please remember that. And that it's okay. It doesn't mean anything. They just don't, their perceptions are different. Their, their energy is different. They're on different levels of consciousness and levels of awareness. Please keep that in mind. And then instead of being like, they aren't approving of what I'm doing. And that is not, that's mean, right? No, it's not mean. It's just the, it's just how it is, right? So it's just respecting their beliefs where they're at and accepting that because turn it around, turn it around. You don't, we don't like it when somebody doesn't like where we or what right now we're talking about, right? We're literally talking about being where we're at in our life and, and not having acceptance for it. So we know how that feels. Do we want to make other people feel the same way? No, because what does it do? It just creates this negative entanglement of, of energy. If you guys think of all this energetically, it's it's a lot easier. And this is why detaching is is a million worth a million dollars. When you detach from having to be involved in everyone's problems and help them and and make sure that everything, you know, or whatever we do before, right? People pleasing and then, you know, making their problems our problems because we don't, we want them to be okay. Um, and literally it, they are problems. We, ugh, it's crazy. I go deep into that, but I'm not going to finish this. I really do. So accept that they're the beliefs also have compassion and empathy. You guys, I know it's hard when, I'm going to use um, Shelby. Shelby was on here. I don't know if she's still on here. Or Sarah. You said your mom used to be that way. But Shelby said, you know, her mom, she wrote in the comments on this other post about how she hasn't talked to her. There's another girl, too, where they hadn't talked to their moms in years and, and, and whatever. And I know in those situations, like, you can be really hard to have compassion for that person. But understand that the reason someone doesn't talk to us, the reason someone's mean to us or doesn't do what, it's because of their own shit. It has nothing to do with us, okay? It's not because we are a bad person and so this person doesn't want to talk to us. No, it's their own stuff. And so just having compassion for them of saying they've been through a lot in their life, whatever is going on with them, please, I'm sending healing, love, and light to them. And it shifts the energy of that whole relationship. I mean, the whole, that whole interaction. It's so when you do, like, it's to think differently about things in a way that's not going to bring you down. Because then if we think that, oh, my mom's not calling me because I'm, I'm not good enough, you know, or I'm not good enough to be in my mom's life or whatever. How does that make you feel? Like, I'm like, don't believe me with this stuff. You, you try it. <laughs> don't, don't take my word for it. Try it and tell me how you feel. It feels a lot better to have compassion. And if you have a hard time with compassion, do self-compassion rituals. And I can post some in here, but just sitting with yourself and having compassion for everything that you've been through in your life and knowing you were doing the best that you can in the moment, right? Every single time. Okay. And so um, also seeing things from a third party. So like, you know, doing the perception thing or having a third party actually get there like with a therapist or me as a coach. I would love to coach like couples, honestly, or like two people, mothers and daughters. That would be great. I really want to. I would love to do that. Um, yeah, I have been trying to practice that. He rags. Okay, I'm all the time for working on my LLC because he thinks it's a waste of time. Yep, girl, I know. But I do it because it makes me happy and have learned to just detach from his words and do my thing right detach because they're words you guys they're words and I know that words can hurt deeper than physical things but it is the meaning and emphasis we place on those words right and those words are coming from a selfish place we know that because it's it's making us happy and this is what di difficult people unawakened people people that are on a lower level of awareness and consciousness don't really they you know they don't think of our well-being half the time, right? And I'm not giving them an excuse, but I'm just saying it is what it is, right? So that's, we don't need anyone's validation to continue doing what lights us up. We don't need it. 
um, which is where an advice detox comes in. If you could like stop asking for advice for like a week and just kind of, you know, lean on your own intuition, it's, it's amazing. All right, the next one, I have like, there's like 20 of these, um, except where they are, 16, see toxicity for what it is, we said that yesterday, um, 17, be the better person, like just be the better person, no, there's no need to be nasty, like just be the better person and either walk away or say I love you, I'm sending you love and light, bye-bye, <laughs> so I've done that before, um, and then take responsibility for how you show up. Oh my gosh, this is probably the number one. Take responsibility for how you show up. How you show up in your day, okay? Like I told you guys yesterday, I used to, if David and I got into it or if I was having a bad day, I wouldn't show up for my business or I wouldn't show up for my client or whatever. Like I just wouldn't show up. I would go in my bed and sleep, you know, I was depressed and I was this and I was that, right? So take responsibility for how you show up and your own way of being, okay? That is on you. And so 19, send them love and healing. 20, step away if you must, um, if that's what you need to do. So there was 20 things that you can do to deal with and handle difficult people with love. Like that's a lot, right? 20, <laughs> And some of them were kind of the same as the other. But point is, there's no, like, you have so much power to keep your vibration up. And again, it's not about having a higher vibration all the time and, and we're never going down and pretending to be whatever. Like, no, no, because you know what? It doesn't help anyone when you are in a shitty mood, right? It doesn't help anyone when you are like, blah, I don't like life. Like, it sucks. You're not, and also... The number one way to heal with energy is to relax. And when you are angry and you think everyone's out to get you, you're tense, right? So all of this is just to keep you in your in your flow and in your energy. You have an energy about you. It's about it's about manifesting that uh, that more abundant life that you, that we're all wanting, right? And that we all we all deserve, okay? And so let me know how that, how that goes for you. What did you like of those? I'll put them, I'll make a graphic or something, but just like try them out. The next time that you have a difficult situation, try it out, you know, try out by just respecting their beliefs, right? Or just accepting them where they are, accepting them for who they are. Um, but also <laughs> making sure they know that the things that they're saying to you isn't right. It isn't good. Like making sure you do take a stand for, for how their behavior is affecting you. Um, you know, that's a whole other, other thing. But my whole thing with this group is to help you guys stay in your power and go about life and start to feel better, right? It's about feeling better. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you need any help with anything. Um, I have a new service coming. It's called Resolution Therapy. Um, it's a five-week uh, process, and I'm going to talk more about it tomorrow in the workshop at 10 o'clock. Um, it's the Mindset Magic number three, where we're going to work on our perception and our interpretations of how we take things in, the stories that we're telling ourselves when something happens. We're going to shift those so that way we feel that we don't we don't think things are just the end of the world, right? No, we 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 reframe them the bad the the bad things that happen. Um, we can reframe them and it's working on our, on our mind again. So we're getting back to that and I'll share about resolution therapy. That'll be tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So I hope that you can join, um, have a great, wonderful day and let me know what you think about these tips. Okay. Bye guys.